morning. Welcome to Smoke and Bo's Barbecue. I'm your host, Bo Briscoe. Today we've got a beautiful 19 pound brisket that Alan picked up for us. Um, this is going to be delicious. All right, we got a fire nice and rip roaring going on over here. So let's just get this bad boy cut up and trimmed. All right, so as you can see, we have already a very aerodynamic brisket. Okay, there's only one little small thin part right here. It's a little bit thinner than my thumb that I'm going to trim off. The other side of the flat is almost two and a half inches thick. So we are definitely going to keep as much of that as possible. I'm just going to take this silver skin off. Most of it's actually coming off by hand. So it's going to be a pretty easy trim. Trash can a little closer to me. And we are going to knock off as much of this really, really hard fat as possible. This is now again, this is not the presentation side of the brisket. This is the underside of it where there's supposed to be more meat. So all of this hard fat right here that's going to be more than a quarter inch thick, we want to get rid of. It's not going to render properly, and it's just going to be a bunch of gross, white, squishy, slimy fat, even after a long 16-hour cook. It's not going to come out good. So we're getting rid of it. Knock off the silver skin right here. Now, when you're trimming a brisket, one of the absolute best things you can do is leave it in the refrigerator until you're about to trim it. We just pulled this about five minutes ago out of the refrigerator. The reason for that is you want that fat and the meat to stay nice and cold, nice and hard. Otherwise, your fat's gonna start to get really slimy and it's gonna be really, really tough to cut off. It's just gonna fight you the whole time. I am going to actually I'm probably going to leave this side alone. We'll cut we'll cut a little bit off just to expose the marbling. There we go. There's a bunch of that fat cap coming through. Get this guy nice and aerodynamic. Now you can keep stuff like this if you make sausages or um, or cut it up for burgers or chili or whatnot. Um, I don't have a meat grinder yet. We are working on eventually getting one. So for us. It's just going away. All right, now, this is still rock solid right here. And more than likely, it's probably still more than a quarter inch thick. So we're going to dig down. And I'm going to take it all the way across the point and take this chunk of point meat off to expose the marbling underneath there and to try to get this point a little more aerodynamic. What you want, obviously this side's gonna be towards the fire. Your flame and your heat's gonna be coming in this way. You want it to be able to flow over the top of the meat and not get hung up or cause an air disruption that's gonna cause the smoke to come up this way and then not go down on this part of the meat. So we are just going to keep trimming it and keep trimming it there's really truly no such thing as over trimming because ultimately you don't want that on your meat. There is some fat that's good, obviously all of this marbling, and we're going to trim the fat cap down to about a quarter inch, but um, there we go. Now we're starting to get into that white fluffy fat down there. Now that's going to render up properly, so we'll keep that. You see this big chunk of meat right here, this big flap, that's also going to burn because this side goes up. Remember, we keep our fat cap up in the smoker. This will burn, this will char, and this will ultimately ruin your final product. So, 
It's gone. Now as we trim, you're going to run into little areas like right here where I kind of shined through the fat a little bit. It's okay. You're not going to hurt anything by doing that. You just want to minimize the amount that you do with that. All right, now, last thing we're gonna do is this big portion right here, okay? This big section right here has a huge, big chunk of fat in it, and I promise you, you're not gonna want it. It's not gonna cook right, it's just gonna be a big, thick, gross, look how thick that is in there. I just cut out almost three quarters of an inch of fat right there, and there's still a bunch in there. You do not want this, it's not gonna cook right, it's just gonna be a big, gross glob of fat. So. What we're going to do is I'm going to use the tip of my knife and kind of carve it out a little bit. There we go. Now we're starting to see a little bit more of that meat down there. And see, I just took out another half inch. So that's about an inch and a quarter of fat that we just took out of there that's not going to render properly. It's not going to cook properly. It's just going to be gross. Now, when you do this, you do kind of run into a little bit of, a, of an aerodynamic problem. And that's fine. Just trim a little bit of this off. Now again, this is a perfect piece of point. I'm actually gonna keep this one because I'm probably just gonna smoke this just as is. And that's gonna be a little snack for me later. So, <laughs> keep that. And then we're gonna get our aerodynamics back just by trimming off a little bit more of this point. All right, and we're ready to rock and roll. So the last time we did a brisket, I didn't use a slather, and I have since learned at how much more beneficial a slather can be for just about anything. So again, yellow mustard. After 15, 16, 17 hours of cooking, you are not going to taste it. I promise you, you will not taste the mustard. It is just there as a binder to hold the slather or the uh, the rub on. all it is get the sides nice and good flip this guy over and that's just for those of you who are a little bit worried about the mustard taste you won't get it I promise you if you're like me and you like mustard then it's not it's not gonna matter anyway but unless you're cooking something really thin and quick like ribs again you're not going to notice it. Get this bad boy back over. And again, trusty old half kosher salt, half coarse ground black pepper. It's all we use for these guys. Now it's okay when you're on the fat cap side, because this is the side that's going to be up, this is the presentation side, this is what's going to create your nice good bark, to just lay it on nice and thick. You're not going to over salt it, I mean you can, I mean obviously if you cake it on to the point that you can't even see the color of the mustard underneath anymore, then yeah, you'll, you'll over season it, but just like that, she's ready to rock and roll. So let's get this bad boy in, um, going to go ahead and get another log on the fire too. We're going to keep this at 250 to 275 for three hours, and then we'll check it and start spritzing. Nice and easy on the rack. Don't want to scrape any of it off. And there we go. She's on. She's on and ready to rock and roll. We'll get us another... 
log on the fire. Scrape out our coals a little bit just to get some air underneath it and get our temperatures up. Probably gonna actually do two logs on this. Yeah, let's get this, this one out of the way early. Get this guy closed up. And we'll be rocking and rolling. I'll see you guys in three hours. All right, guys, welcome back. All right, so we have been going for three hours steady at 250, or really about right at 275 the entire time. So let's go ahead and take a peek and see what we got going on. You ready? All right, so we're getting just a little bit of dryness on our bark. So it's time to start spraying. I'm gonna go ahead and probably lower the temperature to start giving about 250. And our little, uh, yep, our little piece that we're cooking there looks just fine. Let's go ahead and get our apple cider vinegar spray. And we're gonna start, so I'm actually gonna spritz this down pretty hard because I want that bark to not burn. The fat cap is already starting to split on that, so we're probably running a little bit too hot at 275. So we are gonna lower it to 250 for the rest of this cook as our bark builds up. Lots of cooling, no big deal. Everything's looking sexy, yeah. All right, let's get her back going. Yeah, we'll keep it about 250 for that. Yeah, we got this little guy here. Let's, uh, this is probably a done little piece of meat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a done little piece of meat. I'm just going to take a little bite off of that. Mmm, that's delicious. Okay. That's going on a sandwich here in a little bit. So, all right. So at this point, we're gonna start spraying from every 30 minutes. I'm gonna lower the temperature down to 250. That way we don't get any dried out areas. And uh, every 30 minutes, apple cider vinegar and cheap beer spritz until we get our bark nice and hard, nice and black, exactly how we want it. And then we'll wrap it up. So see you guys here in a little bit. All right, guys, welcome back. All right, so we are now at the eight hour mark. Um, eight hours and we have stayed right at 250 degrees just a, a degree or two here uh, up and down and it's ready to go we're gonna wrap it up we're gonna uh, soak it in the wagyu beef towel the same stuff that we used last time now if you look here I've already got this the same beef towel that we smoked on the last brisket all I did was scoop a little bit into a squirt bottle and then put it up here so that it started to melt just a little bit so it's got a little bit of a little bit of a uh, uh, liquid state to it so it'll just go onto the paper a little easier and I don't have to spoon it out. So let's go ahead and see how this brisk is doing at hour 8. We have been spraying every 30 minutes and again we've been at right at 250 degrees. Oh yeah. Alright so the first thing we're going to check out is remember there's five things that I talk about whenever there's when we're ready to wrap. The very first thing that we're going to talk about is fat render. Is the fat cap render. Remember this brisket is fat cap up right? So First thing to check is how is the fat rendered? Well, my finger just went inside of it right here on the flat. Oh, wow. Yep, and over here on the point, my finger just went inside of it. So I would say that that fat is properly rendered. It's nice and clear, it's nice and sticky. It is perfect. Now, the other things that we're looking for is evaporation. The next thing is how did the how did it evaporate how much water has come out of it well i can tell you right here if we look at our bucket we have gotten quite a bit of water out and water and grease out of this uh, brisket so it has shrunk and another way you can tell that they shrunk on a backyard offset is if you look at look at your grate look and see where the seasoning is this is how big this brisket was right around this edge here when it first started so it shrank up quite a bit all right the next thing bark do we have a nice, hard, crunchy bark? Absolutely. It's a little bit harder and crunchier than I want it to be because we're going to wrap it up and it's going to um, be, uh, not evaporate, excuse me. It's going to soak up some of the Wagyu beef tallow and that's going to soften the bark up. The fourth thing we're looking for is color. Is the bark nice and dark? Absolutely. It's almost black. Is the meat nice and dark red? Absolutely. You look here on this point on this little bend, it's nice and dark red. You look here where we cut out this big hunk of fat, it's nice and dark red in between the bark. And then of course the last thing, the very last like sanity check for wrapping is temperature. Is it past the stall? Is it close to 200 to 205 degrees? Is it ready to wrap? Sure. Well, let's check it out and see. So we're gonna measure the point first. Boop. 
We're gonna pop that in. Oh, hang on. There we go. 194 and it's nice and easy it almost feels like butter so i would say that that point's ready to go let's go ahead and check our flat now our usually our flat is usually a little cooler because it's farther away from the fire but today our flat feels like butter it's at 210 degrees we've actually gone over to the point where the flat feels like butter it's super tender i almost don't need to wrap this thing in fact if i was going to serve this for dinner tonight I wouldn't wrap it. I would pull this, let it rest, and call it good. Give it a couple hours to rest and come down in temperature, it's ready to serve. However, this is tomorrow's dinner. So, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it. I'm gonna give it that Waikiki beef tallow, that way it gets nice and juicy and softens that bark up. And tomorrow night, when we come back on the video, it's gonna be amazing. Now, I am gonna do a little bit of the lazy method, okay? I'm not gonna be out here tending a fire all damn night. I'm running out of firewood. I don't know exactly when the next delivery I'm gonna get is gonna be, and I do wanna get at least one more cook out of it. So today, we're doing the lazy method, all right? It's going in the oven at 225 degrees for the next mm, probably about four or five hours, and that way it's nice and tender, and then it's gonna sit at 170 all day and all night long until tomorrow night. We're gonna do some coleslaw, we're gonna have some uh, some homemade back mac and cheese come in from a friend of ours, and we're gonna have a great dinner tomorrow. So, with that, let's get this thing wrapped up. All right, now normally, like I said, we would do this back on the uh, on the smoker. I have no reason to put it back on the smoker because it's done. In my in my in my opinion, we managed to cook a 19 pound brisket to tenderness in an old country Brazos in eight hours. I would give this two or three, four, maybe five hours of resting, and I would serve this honestly. But because it's tomorrow's dinner, it's going to be even more tender. It's going to be even more juicy and delicious and better. So we're going to take this guy. I'm gonna throw it in the oven. It's gonna sit there all night. Like I said, it's gonna go at 225, which is the same temperature, or just a little bit lower um, than we were running uh, on the smoker. And that's gonna finish tenderizing it. And then later tonight, when we get ready to go to bed, I'm gonna knock it down to 170, which is the lowest our electric oven will go. It's gonna sit there all day, and it's gonna be ready to rock and roll. I'll see you guys tomorrow on that. Thank you guys for watching. See you later. Hey guys, welcome back. All right, so it's the next day. Uh, we're done here. I've had, uh, remember we smoked it for eight hours on the hickory wood at 275 roughly. I did cut it back to 250 uh, after that initial three hours because our bark was starting to get just a little bit too hard. No big deal. It's nice and soft. It's nice and tender. Ever since then, I decided, like I said, I was going to do the lazy method. I didn't want to do any more in the smoker. I was running out of firewood. I don't know when my next shipment's going to come in. So we finished it off in the oven. I put it at 225 degrees for another four and a half hours, and then it has been sitting in the oven. This has not been refrigerated or reheated. It's been sitting in the oven at 170 degrees, which is the lowest that most commercial, or excuse me, residential ovens go to for about 22, 23 hours. I've never done something like this before. I hope it works out great. Um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Uh, here I've got with me today, I've got my buddy Terry, him and his family are here to have dinner with us because this is quite frankly just a lot of meat and we got to have something to take care of. Uh, Terry, you yourself, you're from Kentucky, so you're probably used to a uh, pretty decent barbecue, so I'm hoping I, I can, uh, hopefully whenever we unwrap this and uh, you get a piece of it, it's, uh, it's, it's worth a damn. I'm looking forward to it and I'm All sure right. it's going to be delicious. Awesome. Well, let's go ahead and get this unwrapped. I'm sure everybody's waiting for it. be 
on camera in just a second. There we go. There's the fat cap side. And we're going to take just this last little bit of uh, beef tallow and dump it right on top of it. All right. Well, it's done. It's nice and tender. All of our bark softened up. Um, even the parts where I was a little bit worried about, they softened up because it's been sitting in the beef towel all day and all night. Nice and, ooh, even the, even the flat part is nice and tender. So we're going to go ahead and cut into this. Um, are, you a, uh, are you a flat, lean person, or do you, would you like the, uh, the more fatty, tender point? I'll take either side you want to cut. All right, well, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to take the end piece off right here. And we're just going to slap that guy down for just a quick second. All right, that way I can see the grain. All right, so I am actually going to cut this guy right about here in half. And that's going to give us our point over here and our flat. Now, let's go ahead and take a good look at this. Nice and juicy. I'm not going to squeeze all the juice out of it, but it's super tender and falling apart in my hands. So let's go ahead and get this flat cut up. It's actually falling apart. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna get good slices out of it. It's so, uh, so tender, which is fine. I am okay with it falling apart. Because the last brisket we cooked, which was the first one that we ever did on the old country was actually a little bit tough on the flat portion. It was better off the next day when we reheated it than when it originally came off. So, all right, let's go, let's get this piece right here. It kind of sort of held together a little bit. Oh, that's a lie. <laughs> all right, well, the fat rendered off of it completely. Obviously, I don't even have to do the pull-apart test. It's literally just coming apart in my hands. But uh, here you go, bud. There's your, there's your taste test piece right there. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm. It's delicious. That's great. All right, before I've cut up the rest of the flat, let's cool. go ahead and cut into this point. I'm just going to cut it right in half the other direction. And this is going to be the most tender and juicy part of the entire brisket. I'm actually having a hard time handling it. It's coming apart so good. So, yeah, that's where all of that prime marbling comes through right there. And all that fat rendered up nice and pretty this is gonna be great so all right I'm looking forward to having dinner with the rest of the, the family and uh, I will catch you guys on the next one thank you guys for watching I appreciate it if you like what you've seen go ahead and thumbs up the video and subscribe down below it doesn't cost anything to subscribe I appreciate you guys for hanging out with us and we'll see you on the next one